Hey, and now we're live. Today we're live. We have a wonderful author with us today. We have uh, writer Mary Casanova with us. And uh, Mary, why don't you tell us, where are you right now? Like, where are you sitting right now? I'm sitting in the warehouse that is at the back side of my husband's office in downtown International Falls, Minnesota. It's where I store all my books. So if I go to schools, I use this as a, a spot where I can sign books and ship them to schools if, if that's what they need and want. Um, but otherwise, I'm usually living in a little cabin up here in the North Woods. So I'm, I'm like going to town today. It's a very big day. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, what happened thank is you. this virus thing broke out. Uh, all the schools I was going to visit were canceled. All my friends that are authors that visit schools, they were canceled. Everyone was sort of sad. Then they exactly. started this remote learning. And I decided, hey, I'm going to ask my friends that I've met over the years that I've met on the road if they would come on my show. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting me. And um, Good to see you again, too, Jerry. Readings from South Boston. So for anyone who hasn't seen me before, I'm in South Boston, uh, right near downtown. And if I turn the camera that way, you would see the skyline. Maybe I'll do it. This is the skyline of Boston right over there. So that's where I am. I don't know if that worked, but. That worked. It worked, yeah. yeah. So uh, where did you, let's, let's start from the beginning. Where did you grow up? I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I grew up in a place where I was lucky enough to have a, a big old rambling house because our family had 10 kids in it and I was one of 10. And I never knew that, you were one of 10 kids. Yeah, right? I'm fourth out of 10. I had grew up with seven brothers and two sisters, which is one reason I have stories that have boys as main characters. I had all those brothers to hang out with. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah. My mother was one of 10. Oh. My mother yeah. was one. I'm one of seven. I'm the second out of seven kids. So That's I have four brothers. Family. Four brothers, two sisters. People ask me about my brothers. I go, ah, they were all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> we all used to we all used to play fight all the time, you know. Right, right. Yeah. So you grew up in Minnesota in St. Paul. By the way, I didn't know if you knew this. I bicycled across the country, and I went yeah. right by St. Paul, and I rode right along the river there, and the city was on the left, I believe, as I was coming around the. Is that the Mississippi right there? You crossed the Mississippi at some point on that bicycle trek you made. Yeah, I was on the north side, on, on the St. Paul side, and then I made my way down. And I think we went back and forth, back and forth between uh, Minnesota and what, Wisconsin? Is that right there on the other side there? Uh, you're further, you're close. further down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you're a woods girl, but you're a woods girl, but I'm an ocean guy. So this should be fun. Exactly. So then, yeah, yeah. So then uh, tell me like when you were in second grade, did you think, oh, I'm gonna be a writer someday? Or when you were in sixth grade, did you think, oh, I'm gonna be a writer someday? You know, like, I'm one of those that my, my story isn't the typical, like I was, I was reading from the time I was three and writing since I was four. Um, I, I actually was struggling in school as a reader when I was in elementary school. I'm a little bit fast and, my actions and my thinking and probably ADHD and so for me it was really I love to be outside I mean I was an outdoors girl so when I went to school I like school but when I took a book home from the library I wanted to read it cover to cover but I often found myself putting it down and being back outside and then I'd feel failure like this great sense of shame why am I having so much trouble finishing books that others are finishing and I'm not um that really drives me as a writer now because I try to write things that kids don't put down in case they are readers like me. Um, whether they're kids or teenagers, I really aim for that. Like, it's my job to hook that reader and hold their attention to the very last page. Yeah, that reminds me of me. If I was given a book and it was summertime, I would rather go look for starfish. I'd exactly. rather go for lobster, all right? Yeah, 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 right. And, and I was the same way, very active and we, um, I like the woods, but I'm always around lakes and water. So, so very water oriented always and still am. Um, 
always getting outdoors, you know, and so that that finds its way into my work now. Not really until I was, um, and this ties in with coming from a big family, not until I was in high school did I really even discover that I loved writing. Uh, that's when it sort of hit me by doing essays or more serious papers for maybe a history class, uh, that if I could take my ideas here and get them down in paper, yeah. And I was really communicating with another person in a really deep and meaningful way, whether as a teacher or a parent who read something I wrote or a friend. In a big family, fourth out of 10 kids, I didn't feel heard. And suddenly I had this really uh, profound experience of, wow, writing is a way to have a voice. And I, I desperately felt like I needed that, that voice. Wow. So that was my motivator to become a writer. And I just love I just found I love words on paper, you know, just like working words and sentences and creating and crafting ideas that that communicate like that just made me think I want to be an author, but I had no idea what kind I'd be. It took me a long time to figure that out. And I sure never had an author in my life come to my school or talk to me about what is how do you become an author that was I was clueless. I just knew that there was a dream there and I didn't let go of it. I think in my case, I, I never thought of writing really, but I think if you met me when I was little, I would say like, hey, look at this crab. He has two claws, he has eight legs, uh, yeah. you know? So I get, when I think back to my own childhood, I think I was a storyteller, you know, like when people came to visit from other parts of the country or from other cities and they came to our beach, I would, I would tell stories. Is that how you were? Were you telling stories? Like you know, I, to all your brothers and sisters and everything. I think there's a difference between somebody who is a storyteller sometimes and a, somebody who writes stories. Down. I don't feel like I'm a natural born storyteller, an oral storyteller. Uh, but I do think I, I think what is similar when you talk about your your experiences, Jerry, out in nature is that um, I think I think artists and writers have a sense of wonder. And that wonder leads to wanting to write stories and share what you're excited about. I mean, I remember at a really early age having, my mother was great, even though she had so many kids, she was very good at saying, hey, Mary, come look at this. Look at this, a little amazing tulip. Look at how it's shaped. Look at the colors inside it. Or once when there's a dragonfly yeah. coming out of its, its beetle-like shell, here it emerged very slowly and these wings were like, translucent stained glass windows in a way um, you know it it was this amazing miracle right in front of my eyes and I think my mother really helped me pay attention early on to what was around me my father yeah. was a storyteller he was a really good like storyteller brought people together through stories uh, so I guess yeah. I did grow up with that influence yeah so um, okay so somewhere along the line from growing up and having a big family and school. Um, how, tell us about your first book. Well, the first book I did, I was talking with somebody earlier about this. You know, I, I, I have written a lot of books for American Girl and I'll talk about some of that um, experience, but I didn't start writing those kinds of books. I wrote a book called Moose Tracks. Let's see if I'll grab one. Oh yeah. And this one, it's, it has a different cover now than the original cover, but it's still in print. Yeah. And it's about a boy who struggles to save an orphan moose calf from poachers in the, in the North Woods of Minnesota. Wow. I, really, I was really thinking very much at that time about, well, my favorite book, Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. You, of course, know how it starts and many readers out there probably remember, but it starts out, where's Papa going with that ax? Yeah. And it's a gripping moment, something's happening. So I knew that I had to hook an editor before I could hook a reader. Yeah. That's the first front line. And so this story starts out and I'll just indulge with a couple of sentences. Other boys took their shotguns out alone. Why couldn't he? Seth stared at the glass doors of the gun case, trying to see beyond his lean straw haired reflection, which looked back, challenging him, accusing him of being a coward. And I'll stop. I mean, it's just it, trying to put that reader in to a situation. Yeah. You, so just, wrote, you just spoke to me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> My tough case, tough case scenario, too. Um, yeah, so I started writing more for boys and adventure stories and eventually expanded from that base. 
um, but really write, writing for the reader I, I was and in some ways still am. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. So what age do you think that book is for? That's, I would say, for uh, because there's a poaching scene um, in the first chapter of uh, these two boys go out and shoot a rabbit and they um, get a rabbit just for its rabbit's foot. But I feel somewhat bad about that as the story unfolds. I would say it's for third graders to fourth graders who are comfortable with the North Woods and a much and a much more realistic action story. But certainly fourth, fifth, sixth grade, um, it's yeah. spot on. And I, I, this is a book along with its companion, which I'll grab. Wolf Shadows. So I'm going to do a little advertising. These two books. We love it. We love it. We love your covers. Okay. I love your books. Yeah, we'll and these I'm going to recommend. If there are boys out there who are, have not found something they're excited about, if they're a little bit like I was as a kid, you'd rather be outside than read. These books have turned yeah. so many boys into readers. So I know you do that too, Jerry, with your books, and that's a good, big goal of yours yeah. and of mine. But these two books start yeah. with Moose, tra Moose Tracks, Wolf Shadows follows up. Uh, they're still really doing good work out there helping boys become strong readers with great stories. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Wolf Shadows. So Wolf Shadows takes these two boys from the book there, there, which deals more with poaching and, and moose in the North Woods. Wolf Shadows happens a week later. What happens when they're out in the woods and they happen to, uh, Seth has a friend named Matt. His family has livestock, they raise cattle. And he's worried that they've been losing some calf predation and yeah. in this story they go out hunting and his friend takes a shot at a wolf which is illegal um and so these friends have a big rift in their friend and seth leaves his friend matt behind in the woods not knowing there's a blizzard coming and things get worse before they get better and of course like to write these i work with game wardens i do a lot of research with biologists up in my area so that they're filled with all kinds of um you know, real stuff, real facts about the natural world and some of the issues related to poaching and things like that. I learn a lot. That's what I love. So moose tracks. Um, did you uh, was that it was did you think of that story from an incident that happened? Um, you know, I was thinking a little bit. I saw an inc the, one of the incidents would be that there was a, an arrest that was made on our border here between Canada and Minnesota. And it had to do with um, arresting people who were hunting bear for animal parts. So it got me into like the whole world of poaching and international trafficking. And that, yeah. was, part of, that was part of it. So it's pretty also, common up there in Northern Minnesota, poaching, huh? I, poaching is, you know, outside of metro areas, it's worldwide in di different forms. Oh. Yeah, it's a problem. I never would really think of that myself, except uh, last year, these guys caught a great white shark they weren't supposed to catch. So I guess, I guess it happens to us. Yeah, you know? and how that make you feel, Jerry? Oh, <laughs> uh, I I got to touch a great white shark, which was really amazing. After yeah. they after they caught it, they had to admit to the state that they had it. So they they actually hoisted it up for everyone in the town to go see. So wow. I got. To, I'm sorry, I can't show the picture right now, but I got yeah. to see. I got to see it up close, you know? I'll tell you what, any any readers out there, listeners who are interested in great white sharks, the, one of the books that I just read um, as a judge for the Minnesota Book Awards was The Line Keeper, The Line Keeper. And it was a fabulous book that you'll learn, the reader will learn a lot about sharks and it's a novel for kids. So oh, wow. shout, out, shout out to The Line Keeper. Uh, I'll have to look for it. Yeah, you'd love it, I think. Uh, sure. Go ahead. What's your newest book, Jerry? Uh, the newest book I had come out was uh, Falcon versus Hawk. Ah, yes. So I have the Who Would Win series. Right. You know, who would win one animal against another? Really a compare contrast, you know. Uh, Love those books. Science about the two animals and then figure out who would win in the end. Yeah. So I went falconing. I went falconing in Which Ireland. Year? I was in Ireland. Oh. And, and, <laughs> Fabulous. Um, my guide was so good. I just paid attention. And I tell people, I swear, 
he just handed me the book, you know, like he <laughs> handled me, handed me the book. Isn't I learned that... the difference between falcons and hawks with yeah. this hour lecture from the guy with real animals right. and the hawk, this Harris hawk came and landed on my arm. And, uh, you know, the, the hawk would be like a hundred thousand, a uh, hundred thousand yards away. And then he would put a little piece of meat on my, on my wrist and the hawk could see it and he'd fly over and grab it. That's the, too cool. The piece of meat was only like as big as an M&M, &M, but he claims from a hundred yards, he could see. There were six of us that were lined up and he, he claims the hawk could see which one of us had it on our wrist, you know? Oh my goodness. So, and then I wrote a book that I worked on for years called Not a Butterfly Alphabet. So what happened is, I learned that moths are just as pretty as butterflies. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that. So like uh, researching all my butterfly books, I kept coming across these really beautiful moths. So I wrote a book called Not, Not a Butterfly Alphabet. I was afraid to call it a moth book because I didn't think anyone would buy it. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll see if that works. So that's a new book. So there's a, there's a couple of new books right there. By the way, it's really great to meet you because when I first met you, I came home and I, I mean, it's great to be with you today. When I first met you years ago, I came home and told my kids, oh, I met a lady who writes American girl books. And of uh, course, yeah. <laughs> they can't believe it. That was like better than meeting Madonna or, you know, meeting Larry Bird or something. They were I like- Talk about those a little bit, huh? <laughs> what's that? I, we should talk oh, a yeah. little bit about that. I have uh, one- the, the fans out there would love to learn about that, I'm sure, because everyone I've told, Everyone I've told about uh, that you wrote American Girl books asked me questions about them, you know? It's been quite and, an amazing opportunity. What's so that? Get, I said it's been an amazing opportunity. Because I've got a number really? of these dolls. This, this is one, one of my early dolls. Her name is Jess. Uh, what's really fun about this is she's half Japanese, um, half Anglo, and I now have a granddaughter who is half Korean, half Anglo, and this is going to be a perfect doll for her. <laughs> wow. That's uh, great. Let's... Jamie, I missed that. I'll yeah. With you in just a moment. That's okay. And... Okay. Uh, we, have, we have someone out there who asked, what is your favorite American Girl doll? I'll turn my background. Oh, I'm making a mess out of the bookshelf. Oh, well, that's okay. How many? <laughs> my favorite. Well, go all the way back. When was the first time you did an American Girl book? It's the first one I did. Only the older readers out there, maybe teachers, would know this one called Cecile Gates of Gold. And this is the story that I have to give briefly. And so is Cecile. Is the Cecile doll, I don't know the dolls that well. Is the Cecile doll still around? Um, only like on eBay. No, it's not really around. But the, yeah. here's how I started with American Girl. I took a big risk. I had written a lot of Minnesota adventure stories, horror stories, wolves. And then I went to the South yeah. of time when people really believed in werewolves. That story set in France for, I would say, fifth, sixth graders and older, led to a phone call and an editor said, would you like to write for American Girl? We need somebody to write a book set in France. And they happened to love this other book that I'd done. And I said, yes, we will. I'll have to go back to France because you, I really- You were a little fuzzy, you were a little fuzzy there, not because of you, oh. because of the internet. And what was the title of that book, the France book? Oh, that one is called Curse of a Winter Moon. Curse of a Winter Moon. And there's werewolves in it. Right. Or at least people believe, had superstitions about werewolves. I see, So it's yeah. historical fiction. That doesn't look, and it's boys as main characters. So d does that look, Jerry, like the kind of book that would lead you to be an American Girl writer? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I sometimes like to show this because I think opportunities for all of us don't always show up at times that we're ready for them. We don't think we're ready. Yeah. And when I got a chance to write for American Girl, I thought, I don't know enough to go back to France and write another story set in France. The other one, I was just lucky it worked out. But I did go back and I spent a week at the Palace of Versailles, time of King Louis XIV, 
found a story oh. I care about, a bit of history that actually back then was um, related to the sm a smallpox epidemic, a little bit like what we're seeing today. Wow. And, and the, the lives of everybody were um, threatened back then at this palace. So I wrote yeah. about history. That was my, that's how I started. Um, after that, they said, would you do a girl of the year? So I did Jess, went to the jungles of Belize to write about Jess. That came with the doll that I just showed you. Yeah. Um, they said, would you write about bullying? I wrote two stories, Chrissa, Chrissa Stand Strong. And there is a HBO, DV, an American Girl DVD you can get on this. Great about bullying. I did so much work about this, trying to really help kids have tools to stand yeah. up to bullying. Um, wow. The next... The next one was, uh, I did great, or no, the one I don't have, I guess right now, I should have my own copy, but is McKenna. She's a gymnast. A lot of the readers will know her. And there's a movie based on the books I wrote for McKenna. Great. Someone just asked us, where did you get your ideas about bullying? I think maybe they okay. want to ask. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they uh, want to ask, um, did the publishing company tell you to do a bullying book? Yeah, here's how it works with, when I work with American Girl, Usually I do all my stories, they come from me. When I work with American Girl, it's more of a team project and they say, hey, Mary, would you like to write about bullying? And I yeah. say something like, yes, but that's a hard subject. Could we have something soft and furry in it like llamas? And they go, what? And I go, yeah, don't worry, I'll make it work. Um, so, but my inspiration really was, uh, my own daughter was really bullied. Um, in fifth, sixth grade. And it was a very hard thing to watch as a parent. I didn't feel like I had good skills to help her navigate during that time. And I poured a lot of passion and research into these books. So Chris, do, you, do you feel you were bullied by your brothers? You know, I suppose, but I think I probably learned at an early age to stand up for myself. So um, I think yeah. I probably became a bit stronger because of that in some ways. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, I think I probably was the kind of kid who didn't, it didn't look like I would allow myself to be bullied, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I learned those skills. I guess I should thank my brothers for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thank my brothers for making me tough, you know? <laughs> there's a certain amount of that. I mean, it's, which is to say, it's not easy to be, grow up in a big family and you don't have that personal yeah. attention from a parent all, all the time. But there's there's good right. and bad in one situations. Yeah. Um, any other questions about bullying that may might be coming up? Anybody out no. there? I'm looking to see. Okay. Who is my favorite American girl doll? Okay. Um, let me see. What's that for now? Um, they asked me to go back to Paris. I wrote books about Grace. So she's a more recent character. Well, not that recent. Five years ago, it led Grace to another American movie. doll. This is also an American girl doll. So. Yeah. Um, yes, there's, I have a great doll. Somebody says, I think it's Ellie. Ellie, who's I think 11, says we love Grace. Oh, thank you, Ellie. Thank you. I, Grace is a character that loves. So here's what American Girl said. Mary, would you like to write about a character who loves to bake, who goes to Paris with somebody and returns with the idea of starting a French baking business with her friends? Now, that's pretty specific, but it's not enough to fill three book up so i still had a lot of research to do and the first thing i did was i contacted my adult daughter kate and said kate would you like to go to paris i need you to keep me from getting lost and we need to go do a research trip so we had a great time um i like to cook but i'm not a passionate baker i'm passionate about writing and i figured out yeah. how to take that and turn it into a business and that's how i found my way into this character like what's it like if you love something enough to make it grow into something bigger yeah uh, so that's really what this is about following your dreams um and then finally uh, a couple of mysteries that came out one for kit one for rebecca they're both historical fiction this one i went now, rebecca is a doll like could i go in a store and buy rebecca yes you could I, but i didn't I write go the in a store and buy kate and kit you can buy it. <laughs> where'd jerry go <laughs> <laughs> I turn one of my lights on. Okay. Um, what I have to say, these are the first two books that I didn't create these characters. They, American Girl said, would you write mysteries for characters that are already developed? So there are dolls out there for these characters. A lot of readers know these characters, Kit and Rebecca. I did a story set on Broadway. 
Anybody who loves to act, loves theater, loves the stage, this is a great hit piece of historical fiction. And anybody who loves adventures, I went to Mammoth Cave National Park and explored the caves above and below ground to write about the 1930s, the Great Depression, and Kit's story. Um, I thought wow. if, if everything worked as I had expected, I should have a brand new character to show everybody right now that was going to come out last fall but she's put on hold so someday we will see another historical character Anna Dahl from me and I've written the books but now I just have to wait till the timing is right for American Girl to release them yeah by the way someone from Texas says next time around I'm next uh doll I'm getting a kit so good. Go. Great. <laughs> so good. this Jess, this Cecile, this Carissa. Right. This Grace. Right. And this Kit, and, yep. And there's McKenna. And Rebecca. And Rebecca. Yes. Those I are had good. no idea. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have at least six American Girl dolls. I do have okay. a lot of dolls. Yes. And thank goodness I have a granddaughter now to pass some of those dolls on to. Wow. <laughs> Hopefully that's she'll great. like them, you know. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's part of my world. The other side of my world is doing picture books. And I have about 10 picture books. One Dog Canoe has been a really fun one because it's been turned into a, a musical and it's been, music has been set to it, uh, kind of like Peter and the Wolf. And, and I see right now there's, there's a question about, I'll go back to American yes. Girl. And then I'll, Joss, uh, their question was Joss, J-O-S-S. -S. Oh, J-O-S-S. -S. What I can tell that um, that reader is that Joss is not my character. However, I know the author very well. And Joss, oh. Joss just came out as a character who, who surfs. And the writer has, um, was my former editor at American Girl, who really deep down was a writer. And now she has her own book out. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Um, just for our people that are watching and listening, American Girl is like its own company, correct? Right. Is right. it still its own company or was it bought by a big company? No, it was bought years ago, may, I'm guessing, maybe 15 years ago by Mattel. So they, they started out as a separate oh, wow. company. Now they're under a bigger company like that. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. And this is, uh, yeah. I'm sorry if I sound I'm publishing like, I don't know what I'm, like I don't know what I'm talking about. Are there still American doll stores? There are still are. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Is there one right. in the Mall of America? Yes, but that one closed and so did the store in Boston. So I think that um, there is a little more competition these days for these kind of dolls through Target and Walmart. And um, so oh, there, yeah. if you're a big American girl and you want to keep American Girl strong, go ahead and buy, buy a book or a doll from them. It might help. They're, uh, they, ha yeah. <clears throat> they have some challenges right at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's that's an idea of kind of, I, I have about 38 books like you, you have a ton, Jerry, and mine are just, they expand yeah. from books up to young adult historical fiction. I'm, I'm going to, let's say, I see a question here. Are the dolls already created before the book is written? Great question. Um, whoever asked that, that question, the dolls are created after the story is written. Um, or kind of a little bit hand in hand. It means that when I'm writing the story, they're getting, they're, they're saying to me as I write, hey, there's a, is it possible that there might be a chance in your story that your character could wear a party dress? And I'll say, oh, yeah, that fits perfectly into the story I'm working on. Or no, that, that doesn't fit at all. So we have back yeah. and forth and the product, the whole product line is created based on a lot of what I'm creating. If there's animals in the story, that's my, I do that. I bring in yeah. cats or dogs or llamas or whatever I choose to, to enrich the story. And I know now in the back of my mind, there's going to be a product that's going to be made yeah. to go with it. So it's, it's a whole different process. It's really fun. I mean, these people that create the products are it's, so- It's creative. really interesting. It's really yeah. interesting. You know what yeah. I love about talking to you today? is that it's totally different than other authors. Everybody is so creative and different. It's really great. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We need each other. It's good for us authors to see each other. It's, be, it's good to see you today. Hey, um, so could I think of a girl character and bring it to them? I'm not gonna, but could I do no, that? Here's, 
Here's what they would say, because I've had people say this. I've got a great character idea. I, can I yeah. tell, tell American Girl about it? And I'll say, you know what? They don't take any outside ideas because if they take your idea and they produce something 10 years from now that looks even a little bit like that idea that you sent in with thousands of other ideas, they're yeah. worried they might get sued for stealing an idea. So they just keep it all kind of, they say within house. They don't, they don't yeah. try to look for other outsiders. How about you as a writer, though? Could you walk in there and say, oh, I have this girl. She loves to scuba dive. She's not going to wear a dress, but she's going to have a tank and a mask. And uh, she's going to yeah. go on reefs around the country and save the reefs. Could you do something like that? Um, I like, could more like not, you know, I don't think so. I think that I, I have been able to say, hey, if you ever do something on like dog sledding I, I we used to have sled dogs i could do something on that you know but they yeah. they're not really asking me to do that yeah so usually they come up with an idea and then they say which of our authors would we really like to see write this one and then like they'll go oh mary's been to france a few times she should do grace she'll go yeah. she'll go back to paris yeah, yeah. all right fun so process. i'll ask you a couple of goofy questions you ready okay goofy so tomorrow you're gonna wake up in Mentally, are you a picture book girl? Like, I, when you go outside tomorrow, do you think picture book or do you think novel? I usually think I novel. In the, yeah. in novel. Novels come more easily to my brain. A picture book, when, when I it think, comes, when I think of magic. You, I think of, when I think of you, I think of you as a novelist, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I feel lucky when I do a picture book that works well. I love picture book ideas when they come, but if, I, if they were easy, and yeah. really easy i do want a day you know but it's not that easy <laughs> whereas right now i just i oh, i wanted to show the readers this i just sent off a, sent off a big revision yesterday so here's a um, novel this one is going to be called waterfall out next spring but i just wanted to show readers out of these 300 pages here are here's one page of revision Here's the other other side of revision. Not that you have to look at it, but see how scribbled it is. You know, like yeah. revising, revising is a it. big job, and I'm really proud now of the work coming out. But it, you know, for the last two months, I feel like I've been living in a cave and living in my own head and trying to revise something. Um, but that is the, that's the hard, less glamorous part about being a writer. You have to be able to do that kind of revenge to come up with these books that somebody's going to want to put on a shelf and publish. Yeah. Just a reminder. I, I remember someone said to me, hard writing makes for easy reading. Boy, that's right. Um, hard writing makes for easy reading. like when I... Okay, so this is my shortest book sets off yeah in a canoe I set, I set off one morning in my little red canoe my dog wagged his tail can i come too you bet she said a trip for two just me and you very simple rhyming and uh, i dip my paddle into ribbons of blue beavers chewing can i come too um i doubt you'll fit there's not much room it's a one dog canoe but with a slap and a swim beaver scrambled in so in comes a loon and a wolf and a moose and it's a, and of course it turns into a disaster not a big book very fun to read aloud how many drafts do you think jerry how many times do you think i revised it based on your picture books 32 so this is 32, 32 i was gonna drafts. say 50 i was gonna say yeah. 50. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really good for kids to hear that we as authors have to put in a lot of time on these stories to make them the books they pull off the shelf at, at, shelf at a library. 32 drafts, that's a lot. Um, yeah. But that's a popular book, and it's because every word has to be fully placed. It has to work for the reader, and that doesn't happen on the first draft. Not and I bet the beaver was last in one draft and the beaver was second in another draft and then the loon was last in another draft and then the loon oh, yeah. was first. Yeah. Well and I, yeah. think we, I think you should read I think you should read that book. I'd be happy to. Okay. See if I can do it. Why don't you read it? I, okay. I'll see if I can do it like this. And let me move this is for my all you kids bit. out there, all you kids out there that love picture books. We don't have time in the visit today to read it. Here we go. 
Here for we a whole go. chapter book. Yeah. So it's I called One that. Dog Canoe. One Dog Canoe. Yeah. Illustrated by Ard Hoyt, who lives in Arkansas. He's a wonderful illustrator. Wow. I set off on, I, okay, I'm going to start. I set yep. off one morning in my little red canoe. My dog wagged his tail. Can I come too? You bet, I said, a trip for two, just me and you. I dip my paddle into ribbons of blue. Beaver stopped chewing. Can I come too? Oops, I, I ran ahead. There's not much room. It's a one dog canoe. But with a slap and a swim, Beaver scrambled in. Oh, I see. Okay. My mistake. That's all right. I switched yep. past ferns where dragonflies flew. Loon stretched her wings. Can I come too? I doubt she'll fit. It's a one, one beef, one dog canoe. But with a woo hoo flap, Loon landed on my lap. Silently we glided past silver webs of dew. Wolf peered from the pines. Can I come too? Maybe next time. It's a one beaver, one, excuse me, it's a one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But like an arrow on the wind, wolf bounded in. Still I paddled on in my little red canoe. Bear slid down a tree. Can I come too? Uh, we're pretty darn full. It's a one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a grunt thump kawump, Bear dropped on his rump. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's not listening. And you can see all these animals are eating her lunch, her sandwich, her picnic basket. Yeah. yeah. Does this look like growing up in a big family to you, Jerry? Oh, oh, you won't believe this. I was just <laughs> about to say, I think this book is about your family. It is. This is my autobiography. I, I, I can't believe it. That's what I was thinking. It's true. I J stroked and C stroked. What else could I do? Moose lifted his head. Can I come too? Moose, you'll do us all in. It's a one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with the toss of his rack, Moose climbed in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's how I felt when we'd, we'd get into a car, a station wagon and go yeah. up to our family cabin. I would feel like that kind of yeah. crammed in the, in, the, in the car. Hey, that's how we were. Seven kids in the car, no seatbelt. Seven kids, we exactly. Yeah. We yeah. teetered and pottered. I glared at my crew. Frog hopped to a rock. Can I come too? Frog, can't you see? It's a one moose, one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a leap, you know what's coming. A leap, yeah. plop, swoosh, a bang, flop. Fun <laughs> illustration. Yeah. We sputtered, splash, swam, drip dried on the sand. Sorry, beaver said, we should have listened to you. Guess you were right, it is a one dog canoe. I started yeah. to grin. It's okay. We had a good swim. Then together we bailed till my vessel was dry. And with a push, a swoosh glide, we waved goodbye. I set off that evening as the northern lights grew, just me and my pal in a, Jerry, one dog canoe. One dog canoe. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share that. That was very fun. I want one. I have seven grandkids, you know. Good. Hey, well, you can go oh, to my bookstore seven. on my website. If you oh, need yeah? a signed book, you can go to www.marycasanova.com and there are, you can get signed books through me, otherwise through local bookstores um, or online bookstores. Marycasanova.com. Yes, sir. We love advertising for our authors. So that's Thank great. You. As well as all those other books I talked about or American Girl books as well. Wow, that's yeah. great. Want to show us a couple other covers of some of your picture books? Yes, absolutely. Someone has asked, do you sign your books? I think you said you sign them. I do. I both sign them, but also personalize them. So if you go to my site and you say, say, would you sign this for Jack? He's a great wow. reader. I'll do that and then ship it out. And I think you do that too, don't you, Jerry? I haven't been signing much lately online. Okay. I still sign at schools, you know? Okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. So this Wake is one up that island. is done 
wake up island is about an island this one i was out canoeing one morning from around an island in my pajamas before anybody else was awake on the island i canoed around this island and realized that i was i was watching the island wake up all of nature was waking up before anybody all the before the people woke up on the island and i went back to my cabin i wrote down a little kind of poem for myself uh, but it ended up becoming a very um kind of poetic book about wow. nature. all of these illustrations are done as woodcuts and it starts yeah. out as excuse me it starts out while you sleep the day is dawning sunlit fingers touch the shores water tickles islands edges wake up wake up night is done and all of these are carved into wood wow who did those this is an illustrator named nick robleski and is a, wow. he's a gallery artist this was his first picture book our more recent book that we did together that won a Midwest Bookseller Award is called Hush Hush Forest. And this is about a forest going to sleep as winter comes on. And again, absolutely wow. exquisite woodcuts. I'll show you one of my favorites. Um, I love it. You know, well, watching you, watching you, I feel like I'm in the woods of Minnesota. You know? Well, there's the, it, you know, this one especially feels that way. You see the cover here with that little cabin? That's kind yeah. of what it, that looks a lot like the cabin my husband and I live in. It's small. We have a lot of time to read and be outside yeah. and burn, yeah. burn wood in our wood stove. Uh, so this is very much setting. Yeah. Um, let's see, I'll show you a couple others. Some dog, some cat. These are really about what it's like to live in a family and have to share your world with a brother or a sister. It doesn't always go so yeah. well. But ultimately, these are feel-good stories uh, about yeah. learning how to share. Uh, what else do I have? One dog sleigh. I love it. I love like one, dog, one dog canoe, but it's a winter version. Um, I'm going to show you one oh, other yeah. series real quick. Why didn't I think of that? One dog sleigh. Why didn't I think of yeah, that? Yeah, because you're not Mary Casanova. You're Jerry Pilata. I have, a, I have a six book series that's a little beyond picture book and it's called Dog Watch. It's about dogs solving mysteries in a Northern village. And wow. in, in this series, there, there are pen and ink sketches. It's yeah. a great series for kids who are, they're not really ready for maybe a more serious book like Moose Tracks or my World War II book called The yeah. Cliff Code. This is great for first, second, third grade readers. Now, how, many pages, how many pages is that book? This one is 116. Wow. So it might be something you start reading with your parent and then you take off on your own if you're like second or third grade. Or maybe yeah. it's a really, really great reader who is getting going on their own and they wait to have a series to, to read. So this is a six book story, Dog Watch, Dog Solving Mysteries. Lots of fun. Yeah. And it never gets too scary because, you know, it's dogs. They're solving mysteries. They, they run across a hot dog or a piece of pizza on the ground and they forgot what they were supposed to be really doing, solving that mystery. So they're, so, you can't get like too me. scary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Sounds like me when I uh, am supposed to be writing a book and I go past Starbucks and I go in and then I get lost. You know? And you get lost, right, looking yeah. for a reason to get distracted. Uh, right. There might be some teachers or older readers out there. These are on the higher end of what I do. Frozen, Ice Out are more for 13 years old up through adults. And actually the one that I was just showing you um, will be the third book called Waterfall. That'll be out next fall. But these are set in the 1920s during Prohibition, during a time when women were just getting the right to vote. And I highly wow. recommend those for older readers, boys and girls and adults. Um, but 13 and up is the safe safe age on that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. So, you know, don't you love, Jerry, that we get to do this creative work, create something out of yeah. something we're interested in. And then we learn so much, like you were talking about falcons and hawks and the differences. And you go out and you do hands-on research, you know, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Don't you feel like it's just enriched your life so much and you, you've you learned so much more as an author? Absolutely. I have to thank my teachers who made me uh, a lifelong learner, number one, and made, and being curious, you know? Yeah. So. Yes, absolutely.
Absolutely. I think when I meet my fellow authors like you, I think, wow, I'm meeting another really curious person who, who exactly. loves Exactly. You know? I, I really do think that's at the heart of being a, an author or a scientist or yeah. anybody who's really doing any kind of creative work is curiosity, wanting to yeah. know. That's yeah. a really great trait to have going through life. When kids ask me, like a common thread of all my author buddies, I would say they're all, they all love to read. You know, so love to read. Yes. Curious about uh, the world, and um, you know, I won't ask anyone how old you are, but I'm 67. I still love to uh, learn new words. I oh, still right. love to learn information. You know, absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm still a reader. You know. Yeah. Well, and let's go back yeah. to that because I know you know you about loving being outside and i said i struggled with reading i love reading now and i wish when i had been younger that i would have asked a librarian a teacher for some direction and say can you point me towards a book that would help me because i'm not finishing books very easily you know and they might say what are your interests and they would help me find yeah. that book. Um, but i was too afraid to raise my hand and say i was struggling and i now yeah. i know Smart kids raise their hands. Smart kids say, I need some help because there's always somebody out there who will help them. Don't you agree? Yeah. I think I was too shy to ask for help. Yeah. You know? Or maybe yeah. not even knowing that you can do that. So that's what I would have done when I look back. And thank you. By the goodness. way, I, I never did ask you this. How old yeah. were you when your first book was published? Um, I think my I first. I was 32. I, I was. Book I was 32. I think mine, I was 30 eight or 40. I can't remember wow. right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So on the young, that, that's young for authors, as we know. I mean, that sounds old yeah. to kids, but that's pretty young to get going as an author. Yeah. Yeah. Very. So it's been a good, it's been really fun. I'm, and I probably you would agree, but um, I'm not bored. I still love the circuits and every new story is a challenge. It never gets easy because I'm always trying to become a better writer. There's always something yeah. to learn. You know, I love that. Yeah, someone asked me recently about writing. I said, it's really hard. You know, it's really yeah. hard. Yeah. Right. So I really admire you because I know it's really hard. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> I've never written a novel. I wrote a book of short stories, but I've never written a novel. And I, could say, I don't think I I don't think I could sit that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard because I don't like to sit. So it's, it has to be a story that just for some reason it won't let me go. And I, I'm going to have to write it. And you're really nice to come on because I know I called you about a month ago and you said, yeah. I'm writing, I'm writing. So uh, you're really nice to come on and to lend your time. And I know teachers are going to love watching this. Oh, Teach good. Kid. I know they're going to love watching it. And you're an inspiration. And we've gone, oh, oh, I think, over 50 minutes, five okay. over. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. Well, so... Uh, Good to so talk you, about what we love, which is writing, reading, exploring the world, and sharing it with kids and readers. Um, we're pretty lucky people to be able to do this work. The only yeah. part is that we can't go to schools and be in person right now, which I know you would be. And I had yes. a busy tour season. I, um, I had a really busy spring lined up. Me too. Fact, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but at least we could talk to kids this way. That's I love great. it. Thank you so um, much. Thank you very much for coming on. And uh, thank you to our secret weapons in the background, Mary <laughs> yeah. Alice. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, yes, thank you. Our tech Jamie. people. Mary Alice and Jamie. And yeah. uh, thank you, Mary Casanova. And it makes me want to go to Northern Minnesota and hang out with you. <laughs> Anytime, or, we're here. Or go out in the canoe and uh, yeah. go around some little island. Or, Absolutely. I oh, think yeah. that would be, if you were with me, you might be afraid of getting bit by a lobster, but I think if I was with you, I'd be afraid of getting eaten by a bear, you know? Well, that does, it did ha it does happen sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. really nice to see you, Jerry. Thank you. Hey, everyone out there. Thank you. Mary Casanova. All right. Wonderful writer, marycasanova.com. You can follow her. You can read her books. This is Jerry Pallotta from Boston saying thank you everybody for watching and thank you take thank care you. bye